Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Warning you guys, right now today's video is going to be a very, very long one. So grab your pinkity drinkities, grab your snackity wackity woos, and brace yourself. A few weeks ago I uploaded a video on this channel where I got ready but I went super super in depth with every single step in my makeup routine and answered all of the most asked beauty questions in order to give you makeup beginners out there some helpful hints and tips and tricks to make your makeup application process that much easier and better. As you can see I'm starting off today's video with my base already done so if you'd like to see how to get perfect skin every time you do your makeup don't forget to check out last video which is right up here. For today's video we're gonna be focusing on this part of the face being the eyebrows, eyeshadow, eyeliner, and lashes. Without further ado, get ready for a very, very long video with lots of helpful tips and tricks. Grab your notepad and a pencil because there'll be hopefully some really great information to help you guys with your makeup routine, and let's get started. <laughs> Okay, sisters, hello. So like I said, I'm starting off with my base already done and I just went ahead and I did one eyebrow and eye completely off camera. Now you're probably looking at this and saying, oh my God, sister, we are normal people. None of us want to rock a sunset half cut crease on an everyday basis and trust me, I know, I do not blame you, but I do have a reason for why I did such an intense look today that we're gonna be going through. For today's video, I have a lot of different questions and a lot of techniques that I wanna go over. So doing a look complicated like this is really gonna allow me to hit every different step in order to help you guys step up your makeup routine. Since we're only gonna be focusing on this area today and I really wanna give you guys the best view possible, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you right in so you can see super close up. So my first step of my eye makeup is always my eyebrows. Some people like to do them first. I really don't understand how they do that. For me personally, I always like to do them after my base and before the eyeshadow and then carve it out so we get a really, really nice and even base. So I'm just going to show you guys how I like to do mine today. Here in the makeup community, there's a very famous saying about brows and that is that brows frame your face. And this is probably one of the most true things I have ever heard in my entire life. The most common question I get when it comes to brows is how do I find the perfect shape? If you guys have been subscribed to me for a very, very long time, you would know that my brows have undergone quite the huge transformation and definitely for the better. When I first started off, they were super, super thick and had literally no arch to them. And this brow shape after a very, very long time and a lot of nasty comments, I finally realized was dragging my entire face down. No matter how hard I smized or smiled, it still somehow looked like my brows were frowning and I obviously realized that this was not the look that I wanted to go for. Once I swallowed my pride and finally admitted that my block brows were absolutely awful, I tweezed a ton of my eyebrows off to make them a lot more arched. My brow transformation was still not exactly complete though. I wore those eyebrows for a good hot minute. You guys love them. I love them, but more recently, I actually changed them a little bit more by tweezing off almost my entire brow tail. My eyebrows used to grow to around down here. So more recently, I've been lifting my tail upwards, which gives my face a more lifted and snatched look and also gives me more room for eyeshadow as you can see over on this eye. Brow shape is a very, very personal thing. And of course, I'm gonna give you guys a few tips and tricks in a second, but I would say that the absolute best way to figure out your best brows is by taking selfies. It was through that that I realized the errors that I was doing with my brows and was able to kind of fix them and perfect them through experimenting. I understand that you guys don't have hours every single day to experiment with makeup though. So I'm gonna show you one super helpful rule slash tip and trick that can really help you shape your brows. This super simple brow trick involves three lines of reference and all you're gonna need is your favorite brow pencil. Today I'm using the Anastasia brow pencil in the shade medium brown. The first rule of thumb is that the inside of your brow should always align with the outside of your nostril. So if you can see on this side right here, it starts right when I align my brow pencil. If we move over to this eye, we can see that they align once again perfectly. So I'm just gonna draw one little line to mark the center of my brow. The next rule of thumb is that when looking forward, the beginning of your brow arch should align perfectly with the outside edge of your pupil. And as you can see, they do. Moving over to the other side, you can see, bingo, right here. So I'm just going to make my mark. And finally, for the tail of your brow, if you hold your brow pencil at the corner of your nose and hit it at the corner of your eye, your brow should touch just like that. So once again, coming to the side, if I hold my pencil right like this, I'm gonna want my brow tail right there. Now that we have all three of those points mapped out, let's go ahead and actually start filling in the brow. The most common question I get when it comes to drawing your brows is how do I make them look defined but still natural and hair-like? 
my answer to that question is always use a brow pencil. I love brow pencils because the tip is fine, so you can really sketch in tiny little hairs for a natural and realistic effect. And you can also change the pressure for a darker look on the tail and a lighter look in the inner corner, so you still get that beautiful ombre defined look. To start filling them in, I always like to start in the inner corners. I'm gonna hold my pencil vertically to my face and I'm gonna use very, very light pressure and just lightly place my pencil and just kind of flick it upwards to create natural looking hair strokes. You definitely are gonna to wanna to start off with light pressure and then press harder as you get through the brow. If you start off too dark in the inner corner, you're gonna end up with the black brow, which is obviously not the look that we're going for. Once that area is all filled in, I like to take my pencil and keeping our guidelines in sight, I just like to underline the bottom of the brow and just kind of map out where I'm going to go. Once again, using really, really light pressure and creating hair-like little strokes so it looks natural. Bing! right to the dot that we created for the tail. And then once I have the tail, I'm just going to start by filling the outer triangle and start to bring it back upwards right back into the eyebrow. When purchasing a brow pencil, if possible, of course, you should always get one that has a spoolie at the end. I freaking love these things. They are so helpful while doing brows. And throughout the entire process, I always like to go through and kind of brush through the hairs just to make sure the product is getting blended together so nothing looks too intense and too harsh. It also moves the hair around so you can kind of see areas that you missed and need to add more product to. Once I have the bottom and the tail all sketched out, and don't worry if it's messy, we're gonna clean it up later, of course, I like to take my spoolie and brush the hairs downwards, and then I like to do the top of the brow. I always like to make sure that I'm brushing the hair away so I can really see the area that I need to fill in because if I do it this way, it's really easy to sometimes go above the brow and then your brows just keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and that is usually not the best look. Similar to the front, I'm using medium pressure and just sketching in light hair-like strokes just to structure out the top of the brow just like this, and once I get to the outer corner, I'm just going to connect it right into the tail and make sure I didn't miss any areas filling it in. Once I'm happy with how the brow is filled in, I always like to take a brow gel. Now this step is totally optional. I would definitely recommend it for people like me if you have a lot of brow hairs and you wanna make sure that they're laying in the right direction, but you can totally skip this and save a lot of money if you have not a lot of brow hairs. Totally up to you, but I'm gonna be using the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I really like this one because it is like cement for your brow hairs. It really locks it in place. And all I'm gonna do is just run through the brow hairs and brush them right in the right direction so they're laying inside of where I filled in that brow. As you can see by doing that too and moving around the brow hairs, I am definitely missing a little bit of definition right up in here. So I'm just gonna go back into the pencil and add in a few more light strokes just to fill it in. Now the last of my brow routine, which is always my favorite part, is cleaning them up. To do this, I'm just gonna grab a flat top concealer brush like this. This is the Morphe M432 and your favorite full coverage concealer. For me, it is Tarte Shape Tape and I'm just gonna put a little bit of a dollop of this on the back of my hand. Get a little bit on with that brush and then I'm just gonna go right in and start cleaning up that brow very, very carefully. I really love cleaning up the brows because not only does it give them a much cleaner appearance, but if you make any mistakes while filling it in, concealer is the perfect way to fix them up and make sure they are super, super snatched. Once I'm satisfied with the line, I always like to take the excess of that concealer on that same exact brush and put the remainder of it right on my eyelid. And I'm gonna use this concealer today as an eyelid primer which is a really, really great hack because they do almost the same exact thing. So it's a great way to save a lot of money in your makeup routine. With a dense packing brush like this, this is the Morphe M335. This is my all time favorite for setting the eyelids in place. I'm gonna dip this into a little bit of my setting powder, top off the excess, and I'm just going to make sure that concealer is set right in place because we do not want our eyeshadow to crease throughout the day. There we go, that is our brow slayed and in place, and now we finally get to move on to the fun part, the eyeshadow. For today's eyeshadow look, I did decide to go with a sunset half cut crease, which like I said, I know is a little bit of a crazy look for most of you guys out there, but I have a lot of different techniques and tips and tricks that I wanna talk about because a lot of the questions I received talked about blending and using a lot of colors makes it really easy for you guys to see how the blending techniques work. Before we hop into the shadows, I wanna quickly talk about makeup brushes because good working tools are an absolute necessity Necessity to any successful makeup look. You guys know that I'm an avid makeup lover and when it comes to brushes, I will admit I'm a little bit of a hoarder. I mean, this is literally my container of fluffy eyeshadow blending brushes alone, but I understand that that is really unrealistic for you guys. Makeup can be ridiculously expensive. So I compiled a list of eight different brushes that I think would be a necessity to any makeup lover's collection. And I think that could achieve any sort of eyeshadow look desired. 
First we have the Morphe M441. This retails for $6 and is a round fluffy brush, perfect for transition shades. Next we have the Morphe M433. This is the best crease brush in the entire world and you need this in your collection. I could probably do an entire eyeshadow look with just one of these brushes and I'm not kidding when I say I have 27 of them in my collection. You obviously do not need 27, but if you're an eyeshadow lover like me, I would recommend getting at least three of these because you can really use them for any single look. This is the M506. It retails once again for $6 and is a fluffy pointed brush, which I really, really love for detailed crease work or blending out an outer V. This is the M224. It is a round flat concealer brush. And this is my all time favorite brush for either carving out the brows or doing cut creases. This is the M205 and it is also a round flat concealer brush, but it is much smaller. And instead of using this for concealer, I actually use this to pack shadow on the lid. Finally, this is the M149. It is a tiny rounded bullet brush, and I use this for highlighting the inner corners, highlighting the brow bone, and buffing shadow onto the lower lash line. You can get all eight of those brushes for only $35 using code JAMES, and I think those will set you up for success with any eyeshadow look you wanna do. For my shadow today, I'm gonna be using the 35B palette. I'm first gonna grab my M441, which is the biggest fluffy brush, and dip into the yellow shade in the bottom corner. For this particular look, our yellow is gonna act as our transition shade. Holding the brush at an upward angle, I'm gonna go in right into my crease and start using circular motions to place that shadow right up in there and to blend it out. When applying the shadows, I'm making sure to pack the color right in the crease and then doing my circular motions to blend them out. This will make sure that the shadow doesn't get all the way up to the brow bone and look muddy and unblended because that is obviously not what we want. You wanna keep the yellow up here in order to make a nice transition between skin tone, color, and then your crease. Next, we're gonna move on to our darker shade, which in this case is going to be our orange. So to do this, I'm gonna grab my M433, which like I was saying, is my favorite crease brush, and I'm gonna dip into the bright orange shade. I'm still gonna hold my brush at a slight upward angle, but I'm gonna hold this one a lot more horizontal to my face. It is staying exactly where we want it in the crease, and the outside bristles of the brush are gonna do the job of blending it into that yellow shade without bringing it all the way up to the brow bone. Similar to the yellow shade, I'm going to pat that shadow in there to make sure it's very, very pigmented, and then just do a mix of windshield waiver motions and small circular motions to make sure it is evenly blended out. It's really important to keep in mind the pressure that you're using on your brush throughout your entire makeup process. You wanna use heavier pressure when applying the shadows to make sure that they really get pressed in there so they're pigmented, but when you're blending them out, you wanna use super, super light pressure. I mean, I'm literally barely even touching my eyelid at this point, and it's just the tips of the bristles that are running against it that are really gonna make everything blend together without placing any new product on there. Once you're happy with that blending, to make sure it's really perfect, I'm gonna go back into my original transition shade brush, dip into a little bit more yellow, top off any excess, and then go right over the border between the orange and the yellow to make sure that everything is blended together and that the yellow doesn't get lost in all of the blending and brush work. Our next darker shade is gonna be our red. So once again, I'm gonna grab another M433 brush and dip into the red shadow right up in here. When applying this color, I am actually holding the brush almost completely horizontal to my face to make sure that the color gets distributed into exactly the crease and the crease only and doesn't get blended anywhere upwards. I'm next gonna go back into my M433 that had the orange shade on it and blend right over that red in between to make sure that the orange doesn't get lost and to ensure that there is an even transition between the yellow and the red. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of patience, and a lot of time to really master the art of blending. And the best way to do it is to really go in and make sure that every color is blended seamlessly together and not cutting any corners. Next is gonna be our final color, which is dark purple. So for this, I'm gonna grab my M506, which is that tiny little fluffy brush, and dip into the cool tone dark purple shade right up in here. When I go into my darkest shade of eyeshadow, whether it be purple, black, dark blue, or even maroon, I always like to start off in the outer corner because that's where I really want most of the product to be focused. And when I grab the product, I always make sure to not really put a lot on my brush. As you can see, I really just packed it in there and barely anything showed up, but that's what we want. My best eyeshadow tip for you guys to do would be apply a little bit of product, blend it out, and then see if you need more. And if you do, then add more product and slowly build your way up. The worst thing you can do is start off dark and try to fix it because there's usually no going back. I'm applying the shadow carefully in my outer V, which is just basically like this socket region right up in here where your eye sits. I did get a few questions on how to sketch it out, but literally just imagine that there's a V from the corner of your eye right up into your crease if they were to connect 
correct. And that is where you should put your outer V. And then with whatever excess shadow I have left, I'm just going to drag that into the crease just to provide a little bit of dimension. You guys should know the drill at this point, grabbing my red M433, gonna blend right over that edge to make sure that the purple doesn't get too intense and we don't lose that red. And then finally our yellow. We get to take a break from the shadow for a few short minutes because now we get to the fun part, cutting the crease. You guys know I love a good half cut crease. It is one of my all time favorite makeup looks to do. And I'm gonna show you guys how I do mine today. The most common question I get when it comes to cut creases is, where do you put the crease? And that is a honestly really great question that I still am 100% not sure of the answer to. If you grab the end of your brush and lightly, lightly poke around your eye area, you should actually be able to feel your crease. It is the kind of squishy area that you can push in right here, right in between your brow bone, which you obviously can't push in, and your eyeball, which you shouldn't push in because I'm not trying to get sued if you go blind. Taking once again my full coverage concealer, I'm gonna put a dollop of it on the back of my hand, and I'm gonna grab my M224 brush, which is that flat concealer brush that I was telling you guys about. I freaking love this. You can use this for concealer or packing a shadow onto the lid or glitter. You just need one of these in your collection. I'm gonna dip it right into that concealer. And before actually going into the eye, I'm going to lightly dab off any excess because the last thing you want is to place it on there and get a clump and mess everything up. It's happened to me. Don't do it. Once you're all ready to go, I'm gonna tilt my head up and backwards so I can look into the mirror and have all of my eyelid completely accessible and there are no wrinkles. And I'm gonna place my brush right in there and I'm just going to follow the shape of my crease. Once we're happy with the shape and the concealer is all tacky, I'm gonna quickly grab my M205 brush or just any tiny packing brush and go right back into the shadow and I'm going to do the eyelid. I'm first gonna grab the white in the top corner and I'm gonna pack this right on the inner corner of the eye. Then with that same exact brush, grabbing the yellow and packing that right next door. Do not necessarily worry about the blending either. By tapping in the colors next to each other, they're gonna kind of blend naturally. And since the concealer is wet, you have to work fast. Then grabbing the orange, then the red, and then finally the purple, connecting it right into that outer V. As you guys can see, even while packing these shades on there, I still have my head tilted backwards, which might look crazy, but I promise you this makes it so much easier to get full access to your eyelid and make sure that you don't get any shadow where you don't want it to be and you get it right up to that crease line. Similar to up here, how we kept going back in with each individual color after the fact to make sure it was blended, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna go back into my red and tap it right over that transition area. Then the orange. Before I do the yellow, I do want to add a little bit of a metallic shade on the inner corner just for a little pop of shimmer. And for this, I'm gonna use the Tarte Chrome Paint in the shade Top Yacht. I love this one. I'm just gonna grab a tiny little brush and I'm going to get it right on there. And the one tip I have for you guys when it comes to metallic shadows is to give your brush a good spritz of Fix Plus or any setting spray and then pack it on and it's gonna really make it shine. Now I'm gonna go back into the yellow and go right over the edge of the two of those colors. And you guys, that is the upper shadow all complete. See, not that bad when you really break it down. We're gonna take a break from shadow for a second and move on to the winged liner. Probably right behind a cut crease, a good winged liner is probably one of the hardest techniques to do in makeup, but I'm gonna show you guys a few tips and tricks to really get your wings snatched, ready to cut someone, and hopefully, very even. There are many different products in the makeup world that you can use to create a winged liner. Some people like a pencil, I do not. Some people like a gel liner with a brush, I do not. Some people like a liquid liner with like bristles, I sometimes do, but really do not. What I really like to use is a felt tip liner. For today, I'm gonna to use the Marc Jacobs felt tip liner, just like this. It is basically a tiny little marker. This one is $58, which you definitely did not have to buy. I get that as ridiculously expensive. I know Maybelline has them that's really good and so does Kat Von D, but basically you're gonna to wanna to use a felt tip liner if you are like me and you struggle with this because it makes it so much easier. The most common question I get when it comes to winged liner is how do you get them to be even? Let's be real, we all have days where our eyeliners are like not even distant cousins, let alone sisters, let alone twins, but there is one hack that I have for you guys that's really gonna hopefully step up your eyeliner game, and that is follow the shape of your eyes. When drawing in the bottom line of your wing, you're gonna wanna imagine it as if your waterline continued. So as you can see here, my waterline goes all the way around, goes up, and then my winged eyeliner looks like it's a continuous 
continuation and it follows that same exact shape. It is a, a slight angle upwards, which gives my eyes a nice lift. A lot of people tend to draw their wings straight out, which if done correctly can give a really cool editorial look, but oftentimes on certain eye shapes, it tends to make the eyes droop and look saggy. For some reason, a lot of people tend to draw their wings straight up, which is literally flattering on nobody's eye shape. Unless your eyes are literal like circles where the liner would make sense to keep following the shape, please do not draw your eyeliner straight up. It does not belong there. Taking my eyeliner pen and giving it a good shake to make sure that there's a lot of product in the bristles, I'm going to go towards the corner of my eye and I'm going to kind of rest my elbow on my chest to make sure my arm is not going anywhere. And I'm gonna start right at the outer corner and I'm gonna draw a line upwards following the shape of my waterline. Similar to the brows, if it's messy, it's okay because we're gonna clean it up after. Once I have that bottom line sketched in, we are golden, we are good to go. I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna drag that line right back down to the lashes. Once the wing is in place, all you have to do is lightly place that felt tip right on the base of your lashes and just lightly drag all the way across to finish off that winged liner with a general rule keeping in mind that it should start off super, super thin in the inner corner and get thicker as it gets to this portion and then of course thin out of the wing. Once we're happy with the overall shape of the wing, following the theme of this video, now we get to clean it up. I'm gonna grab my flat top concealer brush once again, a little bit more Shape Tape concealer, and I'm just going to carefully go right below that wing and carve it out. I'm also gonna take the excess concealer on the brush and blend it downwards over top of some of this eyeshadow that ended up back here. You don't need to do this, it's just personal preference that I really like a cut and clean line when it comes to my eyeshadow looks of this kind of style. The hard part is over, thank God. Jumping back into the shadow quickly to finish off the lower lash line, we're just gonna replicate the same exact colors that we did on the top, on the bottom. Grabbing a little smudger brush, this is the M213 in the dark purple shade. I'm just gonna press this right up against the waterline. And then making sure to lightly drag it out and connect it with that wing because nothing looks weirder than when you have shadow blended out and there's just like a harsh divide right here don't do that. Then I'm gonna grab that pencil brush I was talking about and dip it right into the red shadow and use it to blend out that purple. And finally, just gonna grab an M433 and dip it into a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow and just blend right out. The last and final step before moving on to the lashes is going to be water lines. And if you guys are a true sister, you would know that I literally hate them. Doing my waterline is by far my least favorite step in my makeup routine. I hate it, I have never liked it. And if you have sensitive or watery eyes like me, you might as well just skip it altogether. It is truly saved the life of my makeup routine. I have never once worn black eyeliner in my upper waterline and not have it be ridiculously uncomfortable and transfer to my lower lash line by the end of the night. So just skip it. Most helpful makeup tip you'll ever receive. As for the lower waterline though, gal, I love her. There are so many things you can put on there, a pop of color for a fun look. My personal favorite is a nude liner. This one is from Pretty Vulgar and I just love this. Using a nude liner in your waterline is gonna really open up your eyes, make them pop and make them look bigger. You guys know I love a good doll-like makeup look and I really, really love the nude for that. As you can see, it just looks so nice. You can of course use a black liner as well for a more sultry, sexy look, but just keep in mind using a black is gonna make your eyes appear smaller. So. Line your waterline accordingly. And last, but finally, certainly not least, is going to be the lashes. The first step of applying lashes is always to give them a good curl using whatever curler you want. I think this one was like $2 from CVS. And the only tip I have for this one is make sure you're getting right up to the root of the lash right at your lash line for the best curl. Our next step, of course, is gonna be a good coat of mascara. And for today's video, I am so excited to be partnering with NYX Cosmetics to show you guys their brand new Worth the Hype Mascara. This just launched a few weeks ago, is available now in most drugstores, is literally $8.00. Hello, and it's so good. You guys know I don't really do a whole lot of sponsored videos on this channel, it is pretty rare for me, but I've been testing this mascara out for the past week or so, and I really, really like it, and I'm so excited to show you it today. Going into the wand, once again, I'm gonna tilt my head back so I have really easy access to my lashes. I'm gonna start by bringing this wand in, starting right at the root of the lash, almost in my upper waterline, and just wiggling it upwards. Going from root to tip of the lash and wiggling your wand all around, you will also make sure that all 
the lashes are evenly coated, which is obviously ideal, and as long and beautiful as they can possibly be. I really, really like this mascara because it's a voluminizing mascara, and obviously, who doesn't love a little bit more volume, a little bit more dimension in their lashes? I love a good voluminizing mascara, but oftentimes it'll leave my lashes looking really, really clumpy. But as you can see, if I look down, they look nice and separated and so beautiful. And also the formula of this is really, really black, which is literally the best ever. Oh, hello. Look at how good my bottom lashes look. Oh my God. NYX, thank you for partnering with me on this video. And sisters, you know what to do. Go check it out. It's worth the hype. Okay, so if you guys are looking for an everyday natural look when it comes to your lashes at least, you can totally stop right here with just a good curl and mascara. It looks beautiful and stunning, but if you're like me and you want a little bit more drama, a little bit of a bigger impact, today we're gonna do some falsies. For today's look, I'm gonna go with, you guessed it, the Lily Lashes in the Style Miami. These are my all-time favorite false lashes and I really, really like them because they're super, super wispy. They're not too dense, so you can still see the eyeshadow underneath and they're also not too long for my eyes. It's really important to keep your actual eye shape and the shape of eyeshadow that you're planning for in mind when picking up a pair of lashes. Obviously, there are millions of different styles of lashes out there, but I like to group them into two different categories, which I like to call either symmetrical lashes or asymmetrical lashes. Lily Lashes Miami's are symmetrical lashes in my book because at the longest point, they are all the same exact length. An asymmetrical lash would be a lash that is small on the inner corner, but the lashes get longer and longer and longer as they go out towards the outer portion of your eye and they flare up. I definitely prefer wearing a symmetrical lash because I feel like it gives a very, very doll-like appearance. It makes your eyes look very, very round. Whereas an asymmetrical lash really accentuates almond eyes and makes them kind of look more like snatched and pulled, which is also a really beautiful look as well. It just depends on what kind of look you're going for. Once you have your lashes all picked out and ready to go, I'm gonna grab a pair of tweezers and I'm going to pull them out of the package very, very carefully. Most lashes are pretty expensive, so you're gonna to wanna to be gentle in pulling them out of the package because the last thing that you wanna do is spend $30 on a pair of lashes and then rip out half the hairs. Each hair is like 50 cents in here. <laughs> now the absolute biggest mistake that people make when putting on a pair of falsies is taking them right out of the box and plopping them right on the eye. Please do not do that. If your lashes are poking you, if they are tickling you, if they are flying off in the inner corner, it is because you have an eyelash glued on where there should not be an eyelash glued on. Nobody has big enough eyes to ever glue on this big of an eyelash to your eye. Trim your eyelashes and your application and your entire life will be a million times better, I promise. The best way to figure out how to trim your eyelashes and what length is gonna work best for your eye shape is to take them out of the box and put them on your eye, but without any glue. The tackiness from whatever was sticking the lash to the box should be enough to keep the lash on your eyelid and kind of get a sense for the measurement. Grabbing my lashes in the center tightly by a pair of tweezers, I'm gonna grab my tiny pair of eyelash scissors and I'm going to trim off the ends. For me personally, I like to trim off one spike on one end and two spikes on the other end, which definitely made a huge difference in the size. And although this may look small, the other lashes that we put mascara on are gonna do a great job of blending together the false lash with the real one. And this is gonna look a whole lot better than that overwhelming lash from before. To apply my lashes today, I'm gonna be using the Duo Brush On Adhesive. I love this lash glue. This stuff is so bomb, you need it in your life. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up and paint a light layer of glue right on the lash Band. This glue dries pretty quickly and it goes on blue. So once it turns clear, you know it's ready to apply. So I'm just gonna shake it around a little bit and I'm gonna hold a mirror just like this one, kind of below my face at a very, very weird angle. Trust me on this. I'm gonna look in my mirror from below me and I'm gonna place the lash on top of my lid from an upward angle. I'm gonna go into my tweezers and then just pull on both ends and make sure that the actual lash band is in contact with my lash line. That's why holding the mirror from below is super, super helpful because you can actually see what you're doing instead of just trying to estimate it. Once our lash band is all glued on there, we have our last step, but probably our most important step and Please be careful while doing this. Do not poke your eyes out. Go in super close up to your eyelid with your pair of tweezers and go in and pinch together right up against your lash line, the false lashes with your real lashes. And doing this is not only gonna make the lashes blend together and look more real, but because the mascara is slightly tacky still, it's gonna really stick the lashes together so your lash band will stay on all day long. 
And there we go, guys. Our lashes officially on, secured, pinched together, not going anywhere, and looking so, so, so good. Lashes, like I was saying, is by far one of the hardest steps of any makeup routine. I struggled with them for so long. Can't even tell you how many times I glued my eyes shut. Far too many. If lashes are something that you struggle with, literally just grab a pair of falsies from like CVS or Walgreens and just sit in front of your mirror and practice gluing them on with no other makeup on so you don't mess anything up. And I promise if you try out these strategies and tips and techniques, you will eventually get way better at it. But once you have it all down, we love a good sister lash. With our lashes done, I think that actually completes our eye look for today. So I'm gonna quickly throw on a lip, add some setting spray, and I'll be right back to finish off this video. All right, sisters, and here is the finished, completed look from today's eyeshadow tips and tricks video. You guys know doing crazy, beautiful, and colorful eyeshadow looks is by far my favorite part of my makeup routine. I had so much fun filming today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video and you learned something new, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below. It really, really helps me out. And if you have not already, make sure to click that big red subscribe button down below as well. Come join this sisterhood and click that little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you'd like to follow me on my makeup journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both just James Charles. And my Snapchat for more behind the scenes side stuff is James Charles the next year after Charles. This video is Sister Shadow goes to Sister Aiden. Thank you so much for me for always following and supporting. You know I love you so much. And if you'd like to be the next video's Sister Shadow, make sure to always retweet my video links when they go live on Twitter. All right, guys, I know this has been a really, really long one. You are a true sister if you've made it all the way right here to the end. Thank you again to Nyx for partnering with me on this video. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.